Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming. My name is Olo and today, today the Sunbreak demo is here. And with that, you can unlock the super challenging Malzano hunt. If you beat, say, a Tetranodon or the Astalos, and then you'll only have 15 minutes to hunt, so it's no joke. Malzano is easily one of the coolest monsters mechanically I've ever seen, and is without a doubt one of my favorites now. The visuals are awesome, but for me, it's the sound design. Much like Valstrax, there's this like hyper speed jumping that occurs when he blinks forward with this new sound effect. It's that boom as he zips forward that just does it for me. Today, though, we're breaking down the mechanics of Malzano, what's so interesting about him, and what you need to know in regards to his incredible movement and combos, as well as that new mechanic, Blood Blight. Much like Bloodborne rallying, we must fight and damage Malzano to steal our health back or perish to the Blight. And he also comes with three modes to consider, becoming more and more deadly as we go, which is both awesome and terrifying, so let's just get started. Now, as I mentioned just now, he has three forms or modes, the neutral or normal state before he is powered up, and then we have the powered up transform state in which he's darker and lit up with his blood blight powers. I guess I might refer to this as blood blight mode. And finally, just like any monster, his enraged state where all of his combos become much more deadly and aggressive, letting him do things you otherwise wouldn't see as well. It all ties back to blood blight though, which I guess I should begin by explaining. As you fight Melzano, you will see that there are dark red effects on various attacks, be it when he lights up his tail and stabs with it, or breathes out the blight into the ground and creates shock waves that spread out wider in a cone. He may even use his bats to send out essentially air bombs that explode in that blood blight. He has control of this effect though. He can stab it down into the ground under him and then drag it in your direction after a delay so he can control it at range. And this is what you've got to watch out for because as Malzano lands attacks using this blood blight, he will get closer to his transformation. When you are afflicted by that blood blight though, things are scary but also exciting. As shown by this little icon, you've got blood blight. During that debuff, you will now heal much less with potions and otherwise, and your natural health recovery is reduced too. However, we suddenly have a lifesteal power to work with. Using Malzano's power against him, you can recover your health at a good rate by dealing damage. The lifesteal works based on how much damage you actually deal, so lots of little hits or one single big hit that equals the same damage, that's going to equal the same healing. Essentially, it's best to stay on the offensive when afflicted because you'll get healing you need to survive while continuing the fight, which is cool because it encourages that constant risky combat rather than running away and healing when you're afflicted. Still, it is a good idea to heal if you do get the chance because that is ultimately much safer to do than being low health and still fighting. The blood blight itself will afflict you for a while so you could use a heal and then benefit from the lifesteal just as you fight normally and in my attempts to remove blood blight I've tried null berries, rolling, using wire bugs to remove it like say magnum mallow hellfire but sadly none of these appear to work and they don't provide you at the start of the quest with say cleanser or antidotes so perhaps you can't remove it through any of these means. Now each time Malzano lands a blow using blood blight attacks, he gains power and eventually he transforms into his new dark blood blight mode, unlocking new abilities alongside those incredible visuals. Not only will he use new attacks, but his old ones will be augmented in dangerous ways. Take the tail attack. In normal mode, he'll slam it into the ground and stab forward suddenly after a delay, whereas in transformed state, he will zip to the target and if he is still on the ground, a tail attack will follow. Now, he will full front flip to slam that tail and push it forward forward, then flip a second time, and then stab again. You see, there are other zip moves to watch out for, even more scary than that, in fact. At times, you might zip forward and then slam into the ground from the air, dealing huge AoE damage. Your warning for this stuff is that he will first cover himself with his wings, then suddenly zip forward, and then whether he's landed on the ground will be the tail attack, or in the air will be the slam from the air. This is your chance to counter or evade in some way. Here's thing to tell you what's coming. On top of that, though, the blast of the blood blight into the ground has changed changed as well. There's the earth-breaking cone that is now multiple lines of blood blight that go left and right or straight forward. You've got to watch out for that. This even comes out quicker and less obviously as well. He might rear back up with one arm and unleash these, or he could do the double shockwave swipe in which he pulls back an arm and drags it through the floor to shoot out a shockwave at you and then follow it up with a second one. He can do this when not transformed, but not quite as deadly. Overall though, the moves that I just described,
subscribe, they all have a pretty long recovery time. So I generally found that attacking right after these, or if I can be in a safe spot during, that gives me a nice punish window to work with. But remember, these new moves are in addition to the old ones. He's still going to be doing the basic combos from earlier, doing the tail stab and the swing, the blood blight breath wide cone, and more as before. He may even zip forward for a quick basic attack or a sudden chomp. It's the super zips that are worn by the wings, covering him up first before he does it. Now, throughout all of this, you may notice he has glowing spots on him. These dark red clouds that seep out from certain spots, like the arms or the end of his tail, well, these work much like Magnum Allo and Hellfire. So we can and should target these spots for bonus damage and to try to continue to control the fight. You see, breaking these spots will knock Malzano straight out of his transformation, making the fight more manageable. But if you do this while he's already enraged, he will stay enraged. On that note, though, Malzano can, of course, enrage like any monster. With a quick roar, he will now have deeply glowing red eyes, which should let you know what you're in for. Now he deals even more damage, he's even faster, he even has a very dangerous grab attack after rearing back for a moment to then leap forward on his prey. Those grabbed will be slowly covered up by the wings as Malzano feasts on them in private, after which they'll be flung to the floor with a brief chance to wirefall out of there before a blood blight breath is drenched on them. So it's a good idea to keep a wire bug ready in case you get grabbed, because I doubt you want to be hit by that. Remember though, Malzano can be transformed and then enraged, or he could just be in normal state and enraged anyway. They're totally separate from the transformation. But much like any monster, we can break parts, interrupt them, KO them, and cut off his tail even. So make the most of what your weapon is good at if you can. But finally, the super attack. If you allow Malzano to remain transformed too long, he can perform that massive special attack which you do not want to be hit by. But fortunately, if you don't panic, there is a way to avoid it. Malzano will jump straight up into the air and hang there, ripping a circle around him with his tail as he goes. After a moment, he will shoot down a huge explosion of blood blight directly under him, and then that will explode out in blood blight shockwaves sent out in many directions at once along the floor, which will even pulse a second time for more shockwaves. So my advice is to be near Malzano in general, and as this occurs, quickly make some space to get away from the main explosion. In that time, wirebug yourself into the air and hang there like I do so here. That way, you're out of range of the explosion, and importantly, you're above the pulsing shockwaves. It's an incredible super attack and very fun to look at but after it finishes Malzano will actually exit his transformation because I guess it uses a lot of energy to do so essentially by continuing to manage the fight and preventing or you know pulling him out of transformations you can actually completely avoid seeing the super but that is everything I have for you in my demo Malzano overview just like Magnum Allo in the original demo the 15 minute timer is obviously brutal I've managed to reach the timer many times now getting him very low but never quite killing him I think a good attempt with one or even two wyvern rides involved and no carts and solid management of the transformation will make this doable of course because he is an elder dragon traps aren't really relevant so this is even harder than magnum Allo, i think overall i love malzano though visually sound design wise and of course mechanically this is such a wonderful fight and I, I wish you good luck if you're trying to beat it i think i'd have a very good chance if i went to try it in multiplayer at this point but i really want to solo it before the full release of sunbreak for now though thank you for watching i've been hollow you've been you i hope this has been helpful and I'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.